How does UV unwrapping really work? What are UDIMs? How can you texture a full game with only one texture map? I'm on a mission to explain every single 3D concept in the easiest way possible. Today, we're covering UV unwrapping, what UV maps and UV unwrapping are, different methods to UV unwrap, stretching and texel density, UV projection, UDIMs, and tile sheets. Let's jump into it. Here's a cube. Let's add a smiley face texture to it. Hmm, that doesn't look right. Well, that's because the program has no idea how to wrap the 2D texture around our 3D cube. We need a UV map. But what's a UV map? Well, the 3D program doesn't automatically know where to place a texture on your model. And a UV map is a guide that tells it how. To make one, we go through a process called UV unwrapping. Think of it like unfolding a cardboard box to lay it flat. In 3D, we have the X, Y, and Z axis, three dimensions, while on a UV map, we only have the U and V, two dimensions. UV unwrapping is the process of taking all the polygons in 3D and laying them out in a 2D layout. And if you place a texture on top of this layout, you'll see where on the 3D model the texture will be placed. Without a UV map, textures get placed automatically, and it's usually not the way we want. The most common way of UV unwrapping is by marking seams, then unwrapping. Seams tell the program where to cut before flattening it. And where you place these seams affect how clean the UV map becomes. And here's some quick tips on unwrapping different kinds of shapes. For a cube, we could add seams around the edges so that it falls out while still being attached together. Faces attached together on the UV map is called an UV island. For a cylinder, we can also follow the edges and add seams to them. However, if we unwrap now, you'll see that the main tube part of the cylinder didn't manage to unwrap properly. But this can be easily fixed by adding a seam here. Unwrapping a sphere, however, is harder since there's no edges to guide us. However, a solution to this is instead of using a normal sphere mesh, we take a cube and turn it into a sphere by subdividing. If you look at the mesh now, it has some clear lines we can use to mark seams. That's better. This is just a basic guide, but these techniques can guide us when unwrapping more complex models, like a finger. Imagine it like a cylinder, we add seams to the tip, along the tube, and unwrap. Or a t-shirt, which is kinda like multiple cylinders. So first we cut out the cylinders, or arms, and then add seams across the two parts, and unwrap. Nice. More complex shapes such as faces often have specific workflows when unwrapping. It takes some practice, but pretty quickly you start to understand where to place seams for a good unwrapping. There are three main ways to texture a model, and they all affect how you should unwrap. First one is procedural texturing, which uses generated or procedural textures like noises or patterns. And here, seams become very visible, so we try to minimize them or hide them. Another way is to paint directly on the texture map. For this, the UV layout needs to be clear and logical, so it's easy for the artist to know which part is what. You can also save a lot of time by keeping the 3D model symmetric. So we only have to paint one side of the texture, then mirror it. The last method, which is to paint directly on the model, which is often done in texturing programs like Substance Painter and Blender. With this method, you can paint across seams, so the placement of seams isn't as important. And since we don't need to be as organized on the UV map, we can pack the UV maps much tighter, with less space between UV islands, which helps us use the UV space more efficiently, giving us more room for detail. UV maps can stretch and distort if they're not unwrapped properly. And most 3D tools lets you see this distortion with colors. Less distortion means a cleaner UV map. Another thing to keep in mind is texel density. Basically, how many pixels from the texture fit on each unit of the 3D surface. Imagine two cubes using the same texture, and on one cube, the UV islands are scaled larger inside the UV map, and on the other cube, the UV islands are smaller. Even though both cubes use the same texture, the one with the larger UV islands will display more details while the smaller one will look lower resolution. So, texel density depends both on the texture resolution and the UV island size. 
And this is important in game development, where one material is often used on multiple objects, and we want to apply the texture consistently on every object. We've looked at how to unwrap our models with seams, but we can also use something called projection to unwrap our models. This means to project the mesh onto the UV map. You can project from a camera or use specific types of projections depending on the shape you're unwrapping. For example, if you're unwrapping a sphere, you could actually do it automatically with a equirectangular projection, which unwraps the sphere like this. This is the same way we unwrap the Earth onto a flat world map. So the type of UV map we've used so far is a unique UV map, where every part of the model gets its own space on a single UV layout. But sometimes you need more detail for your texture, and instead of using one huge texture map, we can split the UV map into multiple layouts, each tile using its own texture map, which gives us much more control and resolution. This system is called UDIMS, short for U-Dimension. It's basically a numbering system for using multiple texture files on a single model. Alright, so the process we've been talking about has two steps, creating a UV map and then texturing. But what if there was a technique where we make the texture first and then UV map? This texture is a tiling texture. This is a texture that can repeat itself with no visible seams. And with some clever UV mapping, it can texture an entire model. Using this method, we could take a texture map with multiple tileable textures and use them to texture a more complex 3D model. These texture maps are called trim sheets. Here are some models made by my friend Fionian, who uses trim sheets to texture his models. I actually used this method to texture my game, Babka, made with 707 Heaven, for a 5-day game jam. This is the actual texture map I used to texture the entire game. And this was done by UV mapping each asset onto the color gradient I wanted to use. And you can try the game if you want, link in description, but as a warning, it's a pretty short but sad game. And that's it for this video, hope it helped you understand UV unwrapping. I'm working hard on the next video coming out soon, covering animation. And if you want to support the channel, get access to my project files, watch exclusive videos and join the Digitalist Discord, you can join my Patreon for $3.49 or try it for free for a week and cancel anytime. And the first 10 people to click the Patreon link in description get free access for a month. Thanks for watching and see you next time.